Thank you for joining me. This is the replay of day 21 of 31 Days to Love Your Lettering, and today we're talking about using a brush pen with your natural handwriting. <sighs> Good afternoon. You would think after three weeks that I would kind of have gotten this um, landscape mode. And I haven't. I'm still working at it. It's such a curve to learn. Hey, Eaton Local PA, can you remind me of what your first name is? I know I know it, and I keep forgetting. Um, so if you'll remind me, that would be awesome. Hey, guys, good afternoon. Did you need something? No. What's the matter? Uh, okay. Kathy, it's good to hear it and see it again. Yeah. <laughs> I interrupted myself, that's funny. So yesterday's replay, we talked about um, you doing the basic strokes for brush lettering and using the brush pen this time instead of, um, instead of the pencil. So today we're gonna go again with the brush pen and this time we're gonna be doing kind of our natural handwriting or maybe our like, our pretty natural handwriting. Um, hi, Lana. Um, <clears throat> sorry, still congestion, still getting over the cold, so thank you for your patience with that. Um, yeah, hopefully this is the afternoon scope, so it's supposed to be short and sweet and to the point with the demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I just was making sure I had the pens in front of me. Thanks so much for joining. If you're new here, my name is Lisa. I blog at creatively.com, which is looking at life creatively. And we are now on day 21 of 31 Days to Love Your Lettering. This week we're talking all about brush pens. Um, and today we're talking about um, using your natural handwriting with the brush pen. So it's a great way to get started. If you don't already know formal calligraphy, it's fine. You can join us here and we're going to talk about some of the basics. This is 31 Days to Love Your Lettering is a very introductory series um, that touches all sorts of different uh, tips and tricks on how to improve your handwriting and get started with some of the creative lettering. And I think everybody was looking forward to using the brush pens because brush lettering is like all the rave right now. You'll find it. Um, there are fonts that mimic the handwritten um, brush lettering. And so this is kind of the, the it thing right now. For me, it was a great progression after learning formal calligraphy and copper plate lettering, um, which is just beautiful formal script. Um, the brush lettering gets me allows me to have that pretty look without a lot of work um, because the, the pen does the work. I don't have to dip it. I don't have to clean a nib. I can just kind of get started with what I have. So with all that said, I'm going to flip the camera. Um, o, A, B, and P. Got it. Um, during the afternoon scoops, I usually answer questions at the end of the broadcast. So that way, those that have to kind of scoot out real quick will still get the full demonstration without the interruption. So um, the original purpose of that was to hopefully move these videos over to YouTube, but I've found that the last two weeks on um, here on Periscope have been kind of glitchy, and so these videos are not going to move over seamlessly. So I will have to look into other methods of filming for YouTube later this summer once we are settled in the new home. So, but bear with me, um, and we will kind of we'll kind of learn along the way, right? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera so that you guys can see the sample page, and then we'll get started. Thank you so much. We are so excited about um, about the new home. Can I make a tattoo? I have actually drawn a lettered tattoo for someone fairly recently. Um, so we're just gonna do a natural print and a cursive, and continue to remind ourselves that with the brush lettering it is all about the pressure and so that's what we're going to do today we'll just do a sample page of um, a basic alphabet so, and here's another one all right so if you are new here and are looking for more information about this series you can find it at creatively.com slash loves your lettering, which will give you a link to the full index of this entire series, which is self-paced. Um, for the month of March, I just happened to be going through the live demonstrations of it again. Um, you can find me at facebook.com slash creatively. Twitter, Instagram, and Periscope, my handle is the same, is at creatively. And on Pinterest, I'm creatively.
creatively made. I do have a penmanship and lettering board as well as quotes and quips and pens. Um, I kind of try to keep track of lots of those things right there on Pinterest. And many of the videos can be found on catch.me slash creatively. Um, I think it's uh, <laughs> the past two weeks though I would say have been quite a bit glitchy and I'm not sure that they're all catching but like I said I'll readdress that later this spring or early summer to try and move some things over to YouTube and if you're looking for the supply list you can find it on this post creatively.com slash love your lettering supplies um, <clears throat> excuse me love your lettering supplies will bring you to the post that list kind of all the different tools that I will use throughout the series. However, don't let that big long list stop you from getting started. If you do not have those pens already in your stash and it's not in the budget to put them in now, please don't fret. All you'll need is some graph paper. You can even print your own at home or grab a notebook from Staples or Walmart. They have composition books and this one is just a regular um, kind of glue bound notebook. Um, and start with a pencil or your very favorite pen that you already have in your stash and kind of go along with the different techniques um, and add pens as you can. Sorry, I'm flipping. I should have this marked. Okay. All right, so off to today's today's demo. Um, I do hold my book landscape and that's really just so that I can have the greatest amount of real estate to demonstrate for you guys. Um, thicker crayon markers are good for practice. But yeah, Crayola can definitely be used and I'll probably do a Crayola scope at some point. Um, they're definitely, um, they don't have the give that a brush pen does, but you can get the effect of the brush pen. Okay. So we're going to start with just a basic alphabet and I'm kind of going I'm going to do it in a print style. So remember that all this week we've talked about pressure going very light on the upstroke and adding pressure on the downstroke. So up and down. Lots of pens will react to the pressure even if they're not necessarily a brush pen. It's just that the brush pen allows you to see that contrast between the up and the down stroke very easily. Okay, my hand is a little shaky today. I think I've had um, a little too much caffeine and not enough protein. So bear with me, my lettering might be a little shaky. So I'm going to go ahead and begin the alphabet lowercase. Um, and this is print. And so now I'm going slightly at an angle just because that tends to be my more natural handwriting but if you want to go straight up and down you can certainly do that um, whatever feels most natural to you because that's what this that's what today's session is all about just your natural handwriting and adding the pressure in so again all my downstrokes are going to be pretty bold and then my upstrokes back into downstroke I'm going to start getting that thick and thin look, okay? So I'm going to start the C like that. You can also just do one like that. And this is all about still continuing to train our brain and our hand that we want to go light on the up and heavy pressure on the down. So I'm currently using the Soft Tip Tombow Fudenosuke pen. And you can see that even though I'm a lefty, it responds very well for the change in the pressure and recovers pretty well. Thank you. Okay. Even though this is a downstroke, I do go light on this upper part of the K, the upper arm, just because I like the fine and the broad contrast instead of having thick on thick. So my pen is well used, so sometimes it skips a little bit, and that's okay to just go back over that stroke. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> Sorry, I'm still getting over a cold. Okay, on the S, it's the spine that's going to go heavy down. If, if you don't have a brush pen, you could certainly be doing this with pencil, um, just like we did the first day, because the pencil, a graphite pencil, is going to still respond to your um, the pressure that you add on those down strokes, and it's also going to give you that fine upstroke by releasing releasing that pressure. stop and check the alphabet. Sometimes when I'm reading your comments, I get a little bit distracted and lose my place. <laughs> okay. I started calligraphy lessons in junior high school and then again in high school and have kind of done a lot of practice and extra learning since then. Um, I've taken an online course uh, if more of creative lettering. Um, but my calligraphy training was, the formal part of it was mostly in um, junior high school and high school. Okay, so now I'm going to do a cursive alphabet. And so that's going to have a slight slope to it as well. And the main difference here is that I'm going to have those entry and exit strokes. So that would be, the, the tail would be my exit stroke. And I'll do each letter. Okay, so I came up to make that loop and went down and then up again. Now the C, you can have that lead in or entry stroke and then come down. It would depend on where the C is going to fall in a word. If it's the first letter of your word, you probably would not have that entry stroke. But if it's in the middle, then you would. Okay, so I don't have the koi. I do have a pit brush, and it is a bit um, it is a bit thicker. It's not my favorite. <laughs> These Fudenosukes are definitely um, my go-to for the brush pens. I find that they're the most reliable. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Tombow ambassador. I really do love these pens. There are, I've tried many, many um, brushes as I was experimenting. down. I'm going to go light on that one. So those of you that have been asking about shaky upstrokes, thank you. Um, mine are sometimes shaky too. And I didn't really warm up very much today before we started. So you can see that I do have sometimes shaky. And I think coffee is not helping that. <laughs> so just kind of bear with it. And you can always go back over and do those letters a number of times. Or just continue that stroke to start to feel maybe a little more consistency the more you repeat that stroke. But that's why I tell everyone all the time, like... Please don't think that just because I've been doing this a little bit longer that my letters are always perfect because they're certainly not and all the scratch paper on my desk would definitely <laughs> show you that that is not the truth. I do not always have consistent letters. It definitely takes a lot of, um, a lot of work sometimes, <laughs> especially when, um, as I'm doing the letters, if they don't look the way they should in my mind, sometimes it takes a few passes. Again, the spine of the S. Thank you. The T. 
see. And I think I've gotten bigger as I've gone down the line. <laughs> the K, K and like capital B's and things, those are letters that I'm constantly working on and playing with style. So just like I was saying yesterday, um, I don't like the two broad lines to cross. So even though I'm going down on both of these strokes, I do exert lighter pressure on that cross. There's our lowercase in print and lowercase in cursive. So, and I'll write a couple of words. <clears throat> Hi, Hannah Find Me. So, let's go ahead. Print. Or. This is a Tombow Fudenosuke soft tip pen. Um, I know that's a mouthful. <laughs> ah, I think Tombow does have a UK distributor. Have you tried Amazon? You want to go to Starbucks and get a butterfly cookie. <laughs> okay. So print or cursive, it's all about the pressure. Um, yeah, I know shipping internationally is absolutely bonkers right now. <clears throat> yes, if you don't have access to a Tombow pen, but you can find Pentel brand pens, um, <laughs> this is um, this is the Pentel Feud Touch um, sign pen, and it is a brush tip. And my lighting is kind of awful; it's not picking up. This is actually a gray, sparkly um, barrel. So, and it just—I don't know if you can see there. It says Pentel sign pen, and it does have a tip that is very similar to the soft brush except this one is my trusty overused pen so you can see the difference between the point. Let me grab um, a newer one out. Oh, okay, here's a, a newer one so you can see that they are actually quite similar. Okay, can you go ask Sissy to change her diaper? Okay. So. The Pigma brush tip, if it is the Micron, Pigma Micron is not my favorite brush. It's very similar to the Pit, um, and I do not have a Pit handy. Um, those are in my drawer. <laughs> yeah, well, tell me about it. I've done lettering for so long, and now Hannah is my uh, is my <laughs> my current uh, guilty pleasure. <laughs> But they all kind of work together. I do use a lot of lettering in my henna. Um, okay, so let's do a couple of uppercase or capital letters. Yeah, the pit pen. And once I'm done doing these alphabets, I'm going to go ahead. If anybody wanted a screenshot of that, I'm going to flip the page um, to do the capital letters. Okay. So. Ah, sorry. I'll do it again at the end if you need. Okay, so let's do some capital letters. And I have been noticing lag time on Periscope, even on the ones that I'm watching, so I'm sorry about that. So I'm going to do a, um, an uppercase print alphabet, and I'm going to aim for three boxes high. So I'm going to go up and down.
So I should probably slow down so that I don't make my pen skip. <laughs> but I've tried to get you guys off here um, in a timely manner during the day. The evening scopes are definitely more chatty and squirrely. So again, this is just a print capitals. Okay, and let's do some cursive. I'm on the East Coast, um, and we've been noticing that it's been a little glitchy the past two weeks. I have not figured out why. Um, I've reloaded the app a number of times, um, but it's not helping. <laughs> and so I think that I may be due for a phone upgrade, or it might be my internet connection at home. But we are actually in the process of moving this week, so all of that will change too. Yeah, we're actually on Friday. I think we'll do flourishes. Um, Stay tuned, though, my times may change um, this week and next week no, just because of so. our closing and yeah, final walkthrough. You did glue on it? Where is the glue? Bring the glue to Mommy, please. <laughs> yeah, she's awake and not eating lunch, so she's wanting to chat. <laughs> Other scopers or broadcasts. Okay, yeah, the scopes that I've been on the past the past couple weeks have been kind of funky too. So I think that it might be Periscope is due for an update. It's beautiful. Thank you for showing me that. You did blue or glue? Okay. And if you skip a little bit, you can go back over and fill that in. <coughs> I love L's too, but I'm biased since that's my first initial. <laughs> and I like to play with the different ways to flourish them. C doesn't have to be boring, Carrie. AT&T has a trunk issue on the East Coast. Hmm. I'm not on AT&T, though. Hmm. But we are actually, um, I think, coming off of cable in the new house. So. It is harder, but I'm I'm trying to work on C's a bit since that's my, my handle. Um, and I want to redo my logo. So S can be done a couple of ways. So you can do it that way, or you can do it more of a formal cursive. Yeah. 
it's a lot of times which style I'll use is going to depend on which word I'm putting it in and what the project looks like. So W, I do a couple variations of that too. Okay, so a couple different versions of the Q. So I did it this way. Another way to do it is more um, typical of cursive. Yes, Carrie, it's true. I've noticed that the more often I, so that's another Q. Um, and for the lower case, you can do it this way or that way. You do, the more you play, I think, the more naturally you develop into your styles of writing. So there's a couple R's. <clears throat> and I know M's are another one that there's a couple different ways to do it. Sorry, I'm looking for, if you're wondering why I'm twisting the pen so much, you can see that I've biased that tip a little bit, and so I usually just look for where I've placed that bias so I can continue using it in that manner and not ruin the tip completely. Okay, so there's a couple M's, and now for my C friends, I can do it like this. What I consider teaching pointed pen. <laughs> the pointed pen is tricky because I'm lefty, um, so I don't tend to want to play too much with the pointed pen because I think it's harder to show the difference. Um, I've done a lefty problem scope before, um, showing how like my grip is much different. <laughs> And the right-handed and I changed my paper position as well and then most of us lefties we all hold the pen different from each other um, there's a couple of J's Jenny um, I don't vary them very much do I <clears throat> I'm looking through my book to see if I had other ones um, yeah you can also do Just do that. <clears throat> okay, bring that down. Yes, uh, two of my boys are lefties. They're not very interested in handwriting yet. <laughs> but um, even the three of us, we are different types of lefties. So, okay, if you want to get a screenshot of that, and then I'll flip to the other one as well. I'll give you a couple minutes, well, a couple seconds. <laughs> um, and then I'll talk about some lefty issues. That's awesome, um, creative little lefties. My oldest lefty is my builder of the family. He is into precision drawings, like blueprints and things, and I love it that he does that. Um, and he's, he's a creative one. He's working with leather right now. Okay, so lefty issues. So if you notice, he's writing it all upside down, back to front. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> that's my my oldest lefty he does that I for some reason I have a lot of right handed tendencies but I mirror the right hand so I'm holding the pen in the left hand kind of in a mirror image I think um, to right handed um, but there are other lefties who are considered underwriters where they hold the pen below the baseline and write in that manner. So then not only are they pushing the pen, but they're pushing the pen up upward. Whereas a right-handed person is always pulling the pen, so kind of going with the pen, where us lefties are kind of butting it up against the paper instead of allowing it to glide on the paper. And then a third 
method of a lefty grip would be to hook the hand. And so that puts them in the proper motion of writing from left to right with pulling the pen. However, it has the pen at the wrong angle. So it's kind of like 45 degrees up where in the right hand, while you're moving in that same motion, it's flipped downward. So that's kind of some of the lefty issues. And so using markers, we can usually compensate fairly easily because the ink is going to flow regardless of where we're holding the pen. But when you're, and sorry, the, the demonstration part is over. We're doing some lefty talking now. Um, if you're talking about a fountain pen or, um, sorry, some things are being packed, um, or a traditional pointed pen that's a dip pen, um, then you're talking about I can't, I can't hold the pen and write in this manner because I would be scratching the paper and not allowing the ink to flow. For a fountain pen, I have to hold it underwritten. Um, yeah, I will certainly talk about that. Pencils, let me grab them um, to remind myself. Um, so I have to write as an underhanded writer um, when I'm using the fountain pen. Because if I hold it this way, it's going to scratch and it's not going to open up those letters on the downstrokes. It's going to all come out fine. Where if I'm underwriting, and this is a, a Noodler's Flex nib, um, it does allow that nib to open up on the downstrokes a bit to get some variation where, you know, and the same thing a right-handed person would be able to get that too. But I can't use a fountain pen with my right hand. I can use the marker sometimes, but not the fountain pen. Um, and as for the pointed pen, the dip, the dip nibs, um, I've got a couple handy. Um, okay, so this one has always been my favorite. It is an oblique nib, and it's a pointed, it's a copper plate nib, um, and I've liked that, and again, I've used it underwriting, except that I turn my paper 90 degrees when I'm using it, and I'll end up using it in this manner, so I'm actually writing towards myself instead of um, from left to right. I've used just a straight um, barrel and pointed nib, except this one, one of my children used as a dart, and so now the tip is bent and I can't use it. And then the other way to do it, now this is an oblique, um, I think so, I think I borrowed it from the library, it might be on my book post. This is an oblique um, pen holder, or nib holder, and this is just a pointed nib, except what I've done is I've put it on I guess a right-handed person would consider this upside down because a righty is going to hold it with the oblique on the left side and so that brings their um, their nib out to there and it comes kind of if it's pushed in properly it should be centered to the barrel so as a lefty that wouldn't make sense for me because I'm already writing on that side so it almost brings my pen um, parallel so what I can do is instead of inserting it that way I can put the oblique on the right side and then insert the nib that way and then that actually ends up putting me at the proper angle that a right-handed person using an oblique would be so um, it puts me closer to where they are if I have it upside down. Did you see that? Um, okay. So I do have a lettering, a, a post. It is, I think, on day 30 of the 31 days. Let me flip through. Okay, so let's see where we're at now. We are on day 21, which is using a brush pen with your handwriting. Um, day 22 is modern calligraphy. 23 is flourishes. Yeah, lefties, we, we kind of have <laughs> quite a challenge. And then next week, we've got, over the weekend, we do catch up um, and inspiration. So you're kind of on your own for that. 
Um, and I do. I post links just to my Pinterest boards of where I put things like that. Day 26 is watercolor lettering with a brush pen. Um, so that would be one of um, like these. And I know someone was asking about that before. Um, I'm not going to talk about that until next week. Um, it's a little bit trickier. Um, then we do watercolor resist lettering. Um, a post for storage. Well, I'm getting, so this is next week. So we've got, oh, uh, sorry, am I still zoomed? Um, we've got brush lettering with watercolor paints. We're going to do a faux resist with a Sakura glaze pen. Um, and then we'll also talk about mixing different lettering styles for word art. And then the day 29 is a post on helpful books. Day 30 is a list of some of my favorite supplies that are maybe not talked about in the very beginning, but if you want to continue on with more lettering and are looking for different like erasers and lettering guides and stuff like that, those are on that post. Um, and then day 31 was just kind of my my catch up or and not really catch up but my reflections of doing a 31 day series um so so that's kind of what's left and i think next week will be a little more um a little more fluid just because we will be in the midst of a move and i don't know how soon internet will be at the new house um and no, you didn't miss Pencil Talk. I've got them in front of me. And I just was going to... Um, so for storage, my desk is currently a mess because I'm packing it. But <laughs> I will get to that probably once I set up in the new house. I'll do another scope on um, storage and things like that because I'm going to be rearranging. Um, what pen for brush lettering in the Bible? Um... I'll get to that one. First, let me talk about pencils. Okay, so these are the three that I have most handy. These are Tombow drawing pencils, and I have the B, the HB, and the 2B. And so really, they should be in order of this. Oops, let me flip them around. <laughs> okay, so I don't know, hopefully you can see that, the glare. Maybe there. Okay, so HB is similar to your number two pencil. Like your regular school pencils are an HB. The big difference between this and a number two pencil is that this is specifically made for drawing. So it's a finer quality graphite and it doesn't give you that scratchiness that sometimes a regular um, number two school pencil will. Okay, so then when you're going kind of down, I've got the B. Um, I guess that might be better. No? Sorry. Anyway, um, so the B is a softer graphite than the HB or number two. The B is starting to go on your sides of soft. So as the numbers go up, like 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B, all the way up to like 9B, um, they get softer and softer. So more prone to smudging. Um, but they're excellent for drawing and getting like uh, value gradation and things like that. So the B side of the scale is your soft graphite and the higher the number, the softer it is. Then you go on the other side of the scale and you have your H's. So you start at HB, which was kind of the center. Um, and then you go 1H, 2H, 3H, all the way up, kind of mirrors the B side, except those are your harder graphites. So if you're doing technical drawing or things where you want it to be less prone to smudge and just a harder graphite, you want to go on the H side. And you can find, of course, the ones I'm using are Tombow because I love them, um, but you can find them from other brands as well. Derwent makes drawing pencils, Statler makes drawing pencils, Generals makes drawing pencils, and you can find them in most of your craft stores. Um, so hopefully that helps. And as for um, brush lettering in the Bible, um, I don't do, let's see. Um, I'm going to try and turn to a page that has brush lettering. I actually do more of the faux brush in my Bible just because 
with the juicy ink, it'll bleed through. Um, I do have a sample page where I've tested my brushes, and I'll turn to that. Okay. Oops, sorry, let's give you some light. <laughs> Thank you for those of you that are sticking around. This is just kind of answering um, questions and answers. Um, so this is not brush lettering. This is faux brush using the Tom. Um, sorry, not Tombow. <laughs> Goodness, the Pilot friction markers um, because I find that they don't really bleed. Um, sharpening the pencils, you're just going to want a good quality sharpener. The one that I'm using currently is a wood sharpener um, from Kum, K-U-M. Uh, I'm going to post a couple of pictures on that. There, It's in the post. Um, if you go to 31 Days to Love Your Lettering and pull up the full index and go to the watercolor lettering with a brush pen, um, it, I talk about a few different brands on there. I do have the Aquash or aquash. Um, Kuretake I like because it's really nice and fine and I do prefer the fine um, water brushes as a lefty. Um, let's see if I have any more brush leather in here. This is another um, faux brush using um, the Zig Millennium fine inks and then coloring in with a marker. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I find that the Tombow pencils, when I'm sharpening them, I'm not having breakage because what Tombow does that I don't know that other brands do is that where the wood and the graphite meet, they've actually glued it. They've adhered it so that even if your lead splits in the barrel of the pencil, when you're sharpening it, like especially the colored pencils, it's not going to pop off and break because it's adhered to the wood. So that was kind of a neat feature for me to find with them. Okay, so this is my test page. Um, and so it's just a blank page in the Bible that I try um, any new pens that I get that I want to potentially use in my Bible. And so you can see on the back which ones <laughs> bleed through. My my favorite washi pen, I don't use in my Bible unless it's on washi tape because it'll go right through these tissue papers. Um, the Sailor brush pen did not bleed very much and the Kuretake brush pens did not bleed very much either. My Tombow brush, it did bleed just a tiny bit on the capitals where I've held the pen for too long. If you are moving fast, it doesn't allow the ink to soak through as much. So a lot of it will have to do with your speed. So as you're just starting, you're going to want to either use an older pen that's not super juicy or um, stick with the faux, the faux brush technique. Um, so hopefully that helps. So yeah, let me grab, um, let me grab those other brushes. So <laughs> when I tell you that I have tried a lot of different brush pens to find my favorites, I'm not kidding. Um, pretty much if they make it, I've tried it because as a lefty, not everything works. <laughs> and so that's why I like to try them all. Um, so here's a pit brush. So this is a color one, um, but what you'll see is that the main difference, aside from it being a color pen, is that this, the pit tip, is a felt tip brush, which means this end is going to not stay pointed. It's going to, um, it's going to fray a bit over time, and the pen does not want to focus. But that's the difference between the felt tip and the nylon. Carrie, congratulations. That is so hard to be in that season where you want to have a little bit of creative outlet, but you obviously have definitely got your hands literally and figuratively filled. Um, but it's neat that you can just spend just a couple minutes 
maybe a day working on this and feel that creative outlet. So I'm hoping that that's what this does for you. Um, so again, so that's the pit brush. And really, I find that these are, um, it's not it's responsive, but not in the same way that the nylon tips are. Like when I use the pit brushes, I feel like I'm bending that felt tip so that it might eventually pop off. I've never had that happen, but that's what it feels like when I'm using it. It is. <laughs> um, I'm at creatively on Instagram as well. Um, try to keep the same thing everywhere. Pinterest is the only place where I'm different. Um, and I've gone back to creatively made there, which is what my shop is. The, the Pigma, um, Pigma fine brushes are not, are not too bad. And these are pigment ink. Um, they came in a set of three, a medium brush, a bold brush, and a fine brush. Um, sorry, remove the caps. Sorry if you're getting motion sickness. Okay. So here's those three brushes next to each other. The fine brush is very simpler, similar to the Fudenosuke's. And then the medium brush is almost like the pit, except that you're not seeing so much of the straight point of that nib. And then the, the bold is definitely very similar to the dual brush or the pit pen, or it's a little bit bolder than the pit pen. Um, but again, when you use these bolder brushes, my light is flaring. Goodness, come on. You've got too much contrast there, huh? Um, you have to work bigger um, because if you work small, you're not going to have enough time to see the change in that, um, that up and down stroke. And I find that the bigger brushes are harder to find um, find the rhythm because you've got so much space there to react over. Um, here's the medium. A little bit better. And then, sorry, and here's the fine. I do get a little bit more fray on these than I do the Tombow Fudenosuke's. So, so, but I like it because it is a pigment ink and the Tombow is a water-based ink. But I happened to notice um, a couple weeks ago that once the Tombow Fudenosuke was completely dry, like over time, um, it resisted bleeding when I put watercolor over it. So that was kind of a, a fun thing to to find out. This is the Kurataki, um, the Zig Coco Iro, which is a refillable pen. You buy the barrels and then you buy, um, you buy refills for them. And this is their brush pen, except this is not, not, these are nylon bristles. Um, so it's a very different look and it's a lot different to learn control on this one. Kind of similar to the water brushes. You're going to have to go quite a bit bigger to give yourself time to transition between the thin and the thick. Um, and you can see those brush, those bristles will kind of splay out. Um, so it takes a little while. There's a learning curve to learning that. Um, and this is the Kurataki, I think it's Fudigo Kochi. Um, this is their hard tip, which is similar to Tombow's. Um, it's just a bit juicier, so I find that it's sometimes a little bit sloppier. Um, whereas, here's my, my Tombow. It's got just a more consistent ink flow. It's kind of, it's, it's neat to try them. Jet Pens has a sample pack of the different brush pens. And when I was um, first, you know, going through all the different ones, I did buy a sample pack. Um, and 
like you can see, <laughs> it's the, the Tombos are the ones that I have the most of because they're the ones I find most reliable. <laughs> so, again, they don't. They don't pay me to say that, they just spoil me with getting to try um, some of their supplies each month. So, there are some. And, um, and I talk about pretty much all of the brush pens. If you go on to, um, I think it's the supply list, mentions a few different ones, and then um, when I'm wrapping it up with some of my favorite supplies on day 30, I talk about lots of different ones. So that was kind of a long and chatty scope, but <laughs> if no one else has any other questions, I'm going to hop off, get some packing done before this evening, and for those that want to join this evening, I'm on, um, will I cover, I think that that's an autocorrect, <laughs> although flu brain pens might, uh, <laughs> found <pens. laughs> That was awesome. That was the most awesome autocorrect. Um, I don't cover fountain pens in this series. Um, the 31 Days to Love Your Lettering was written to be a very introductory um, series just to get you kind of started. Um, mostly to embrace your natural handwriting and finding your own style, um, but then also feeling confident enough to get started with some of the more creative aspects of lettering. So it's a very basic, I think it's very introductory and basic level. My hope later this summer is to do a smaller series because 31 days was crazy. Um, <laughs> to do smaller series that focus on one pen type at a time and kind of drawing out different styles from that one pen. So going back to the calligraphy pen, going back to the brush pen, things like that, and learning on, about kind of varying our style a bit. Quite similar to how when we talked about altering your natural handwriting with the fine point pen, how we did just small changes to the bowls or the, the angle of the, or the slope of the letter those little things, but now going back with each pen type and kind of drawing out those styles a little bit more. But that will come later this summer when I'm settled in my new home and done packing and unpacking and all that crazy stuff. So with all that said, I'm going to hop off, go get lunch before my other children come home from school. Um, I'll be back at 9.30 p.m. tonight for, it'll be the same demonstration just for my evening folks. Um, if you're there, I'll love to see you. If I don't see you then, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.